Thank you guys. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to my talk or actually a quick guide on how to become your company's CEO with little effort. So first I must start with a disclaimer. So I believe the tech I'm presenting today is a game changer when it comes to social engineering attacks and it may cause harm very fast. So please remember that you can always be at the other side of the barrel. Please don't be evil, don't use uh, deep fakes without the approval of your target. Okay, no seriously. <laughs> uh, but this is my target. Uh, so I'd like you to meet my company's former CEO and current chairman, Udi Mukadi. And this is him um, on a podcast interview that he did last year. Oh, uh, absolutely, and uh, great to talk to you here. Uh, I think the beauty of the Cyborg story to fast forward is we pioneered the space but continue to innovate and market lead it. A lot of companies don't. Yeah, so Udi was my target when I played around with deepfakes. And now I'd like to go over the obligatory, who am I? So my name is Gal and I'm a vulnerability research manager at CyberArk Labs. And actually my favorite research fields are uh, embedded devices such as ISP equipment and mesh Wi-Fi. And more importantly, who am I not? Uh, so I'm not a mach uh, machine learning expert whatsoever. This project was started as a challenge uh, to see how far I can go with real-time avatar, uh, with creating a real-time avatar of my company's chairman. And I'm not going to use the A word because I bet you are all sick and tired from hearing about this buzzword and robot apocalypse. And, <laughs> and as you uh, all see, I am definitely not my company's chairman. But this is me with a button shirt. And this is me with Udi's office as a background. And this is me with Udi's face. Hi, um, I'm Odis Clone, and um, I'm very excited to be here, and it's just great to talk to you all. Yeah, so you probably figured out uh, that this video was uh, made with uh, real-time video and audio deepfake. Okay, so for today's agenda, I would like uh, to uh, be go over the bare minimum terms about machine learning. Uh, going over the process of creating a real-time video and audio deepfakes and lastly combine it all together and see how this tech can be weaponized for social engineering attack. Okay, so unfortunately I don't have enough time today to go over or be too technical about how this tech work but I want to clear some terms before I begin. So machine learning one-on-one -on -one, and actually when I use the term machine learning or ML, I actually refer to convolutional neural network or CNN, which is a class in ML. But for the, fa for the sake of simplicity, let's just call it ML. So ML model is a program that has been trained to recognize certain patterns and types. The most classic example is image or audio recognition. And you need to train a model over a set of data, providing it an algor algorithm it can use to reason over and learn from those data. Uh, for example, video frames and audio uh, samples as a data set and image or audio mapping as the algorithm. And once you have trained your model, you can use it to reason over data that it hasn't seen before and make prediction about those data. For example, detecting a face in a frame and swapping it. Training is basically doing a lot of mathematical calculation which takes time and often measured by iteration which gives you an indication on how fast you're training your model. And again, please keep in mind uh, uh, this is a very high level explanation. I removed some terms just to make things simple. Okay, so since training a model involved in a lot of math calculation, uh, you need the right hardware to do it in a reasonable time. So GPUs were actually designed to do a lot of this kind of calculation and if you got a powerful gaming PC, uh, you can use it to train a model. Uh, but if you don't, you can pay around 50 bucks per week and get it down on the cloud. And also you can use Google Colab, which is a Jupyter notebook that can actually be used to train a model for free. 
Okay, so great. Now we can talk about video and audio deepfakes. So the first thing uh, you want to do when creating a deepfake avatar is gather a high quality data of your target. Uh, this can this later be used as a data set to train your model. So for video, I find YouTube and Google videos to be a great place to start, but you can also find high quality videos in the company's website or in virtual meetings. For audio, here you have aim for high quality audio. Usually podcasts and media interviews has the best uh, uh, sound production and they are the best source. But if your target is a CEO of a traded company, then you're most likely to find audio source in post earning calls. And lastly, um, you might want a background, which is not a data set, uh, it's just a prop for staging. Uh, but if you want to tell a certain story, like for example, you got stuck outside of your office or something like that, then uh, you can use Google Maps or um, uh, YouTube to get the right background. I used Udi's uh, office background. I got Udi's office background from a um, media interview. Okay, so now we're ready to talk on how video deepfakes are done. So in 2008, a talented guy called Ipirov created a project called Deepface Lab um, or DFL for offline video deepfakes. And I bet you probably saw a lot of meme using this kind of project. And starting uh, using DFL might be a little bit intimidating. Uh, you need to run different scripts and there are around 32 different parameters that you need to configure while you train your model and it's affect how you train your model. Um, but this project has an active community called Mr. Deepfakes and you can get a lot of help from there. Okay, so to understand real-time deepfakes, we must understand offline deepfake first. So let's say I want to swap the face of the upper character with the bottom character. For that, I need to give DFL a source video with the face I wish to replace. And then a destination video of the target uh, you wish to replace with. Uh, for good result, your data set should include a variety of uh, videos of your target with different angle and different lighting. And then DFL can create and train a model and depends on your hardware, it should take a few days. And in some point in time, your model should reach enough iteration to perform the face swap correctly. So this model is then applied on the source video to change the source face with the destination face. So in high level, DFL split the video, fra the video into frames. Then for every frame, it apply a two stage model. The first stage of the model is detecting the source face. And the second is swapping the source face with the destination face. After it's done for every frame, you got yourself a deep fake video. All right, and in 2021, Ipirov created a new project called Deepface Live. And this software can run DFL models in real time uh, and it's very straightforward to use. Okay, so now let's talk about how to train a real time DFL model. Same as before, you need a target data set, again with variety of angles and lightning. You feed it to the same DFL project. But this time, since your model aimed to work on any given face, your source data set will need to be different pictures of different people. I used a recommended celebrity uh, data set with around 10K of uh, pre-mapped faces. And then you let DFL works his magic again, and after a few days, you uh, again, depends on your hardware, you get yourself a real-time model. Okay, now to put it in use, you should connect your web camera to the uh, DeepFace Live program. The DeepFace Live will load the model that you created and run it on the fly for every frame that it gets. And then with OBS, you can direct it to everywhere, anywhere you like. 
like, for example, to do a video conference. But wait, there's more. I actually uh, realized that by using Snap Camera, I can apply additional effect to help me improve cosmetic. For example, beard and hairstyle. And actually, this is how I managed not to shave my head when I did Udi's deepfake. OK. Um, lastly, um, real-time deepfakes currently has some limitations. Uh, face expressions, for example, uh, like pulling your tongue out um, my, may not look that good. And also objects that covers your face, like mask, hand, uh, they can make you look unreal. And lastly, comparing to offline deepfake, here you need um, a GPU at your endpoint. And the more powerful GPU you have, the more frames per second you're gonna get. Okay, so now let's talk about audio deepfakes. And I'll start with spe speech to text first. Okay, so this tech is very popular and today you can see many companies providing these kind of services. Uh, quite impressively, in some cases, you only need a one minute of clear audio sample. And full disclosure, I paid a few dollars to Eleven Labs and I work with them. Uh, but I believe that you can also get a pretty good result with an open source project called Cookie. And after you train your model, it takes uh, text and translate it into speech that sounds like your target. So, um, as you might think, text to speech is not enough for real time deepfake since it's text based and not voice based. So now uh, for a voice-based solution, which is called voice conversion, or VC. So on March 2023, uh, our VC project was created by Fumi Ama, FTP, uh, FTPS, and uh, Deepomb, maybe, uh, three anim enthusiastic uh, developers. And this project converts voice samples and supports just about any language. Uh, it also supports singing, which is cool. And uh, configuring this project uh, takes some time, but it's way less intimidating than DFL. All right, so for RVC, you need at least 10 minutes of clear audio data set. The more, the better. And after a few hours, RVC created a VC model. This model can take any voice as an input and convert it to the target's voice. But wait, there's more. Remember that we talked that speech, uh, text to speech only need one minute of audio? So you can actually use text to speech model to generate a bigger data set for RVC. So basically you only need one minute of audio uh, for RVC as well. Okay, and now for running the model on the fly. So in August 22, uh, a guy called Okada created a project called Voice Changer. Um, it supports RVC model as well as other VC models, and it's very, very straightforward to work with. And um, so you can take your microphone, connect it to Voice Changer with your RVC model, and then use a program called AB Audio that redirects the audio to your favorite program. And then you can uh, call someone using a voice deepfake. And RVC model uh, also has some limitation, mainly around constant syllables. For example, if you say uh, for a period of time, it may sound unnatural. And also voice changer has to keep a buffer of your voice and con to convert it on the fly and that might create latency. And same as Deepfake Live, you also need a relatively powerful GPU at your uh, endpoint. Okay, lastly, I want to talk about the obvious profit uh, reason. I believe that real-time deepfakes is, uh, will dramatically change how social engineering attack are uh, executed. Uh, no more text, no more emails. You can expect your supervisor calling you and asking you to do stuff. And also that, of course, can cause business damage, money transfer, job termination, granting access, you name it. And of course, it can also lead to data leakage, such as uh, confidential documents or credential leakage and so on. Um, 
but it can also create business fatigue. Think of it, if you need, let's say, perform multi-factor authentication by any kind for every phone call that you do, that can affect the entire business operation. Okay, and actually to use this tech for social engineering attack, um, you need to collect uh, a data and stage a specific uh, story. And then um, you probably want to automate everything just that you will be able to train the model in a relatively fast way. And um, also you can use uh, bandwidth restriction if your endpoint uh, or if your model is not mature enough and you just wanna uh, get away with low quality or with latency issues. Okay, so for conclusion, uh, since uh, this is a social engineering game changer, um, and sorry, this is I think a social engineering game changer, uh, training a model is a little difficult and it takes some time and requires some reading to do beforehand. However, running the model itself on the endpoint is super easy and super easy, uh, straightforward to use. So since training a model might be high effort, I came out with something called DEFCON Video Art, which stands for Deep Fake Conversion or, uh, for Video and Audio in Real Time. Or uh, a fancy bash script that automates everything that I show today. So um, it uses pre-trained models to save time. It, uh, uh, using best practice configuration, I managed to find and work for me. And I packed it all in uh, uh, the, all the in, uh, environment dependencies so I can actually use it on my machine or in the cloud and hopefully in code one day. Okay, so um, to use it, I just need three minutes of video and one minute of audio. I then use DFL and RVC to train the model. And after um, around one day for video, I end up with reasonable results. And after 30 minutes of, uh, uh, of audio, I, I mean, after three minutes, I got a reasonable results for audio. Again, it depends on your hardware. And you end up with two mod models of audio and video. Okay, uh, and then you can use it in the st streaming setup I just demonstrated and use it as you wish. And now for a live demo. Okay. Hi, I'm Jeff Moss, founder of DEFCON. I hope you enjoyed this talk because right after it, DEFCON is officially cancelled. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so what to do? So like every social engineering attack, awareness is a key factor. Uh, today everybody know not to trust suspicious emails and texts and seems like we already reached the point where you must suspect a suspicious uh, phone and video calls as well. Uh, if something is fishy, then it probably is. And uh, you should always ask for additional information, uh, preferably this kind of information that only you and the person uh, at the other uh, side of the line knows. Also, you can use uh, current uh, real-time models limitation, as I mentioned before, but please keep in mind that this limitation might be uh, solved in the future. Okay, and as for uh, technological mitigation, well, um, you can ask for multi-factor authentication. Uh, there are some research papers and GitHub projects that aim to detect deep fakes uh, using ML. And there are also commercial products such as uh, Intel Bloodflow. And uh, 
lastly, you can use other phishing mitigations such as uh, notifications and alerts uh, that will be triggered when you're uh, under a deep fake attack, something like that. Okay, as for future work, I plan to try to do a full head uh, deep fake, including the, the hair and everything. I plan to try to play with different source data set, example, just my own data set and see how it goes. And lastly, collab automation uh, or integration for uh, the environment I demonstrated before. Lastly, I wanted to uh, say thanks uh, to Mark that helped me with the research and great tutorials I find online, my targets that uh, approved uh, the use of their image, and lastly, the Archer TV show, which I think is gonna start a new uh, season this uh, month. Thank you.